our Easter story. Yeah, remember Jesus pulled into Jerusalem on a donkey? And the people celebrated him with palms, leaves, and their coats on the ground shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! But even though the people were so happy celebrating Jesus, the religious people were making their plans to get rid of him. <laughs> they planned to do this during the Passover. But that didn't stop Jesus from continuing with God's plan to rescue us all. God always keeps his promises. Most thought Jesus was going to save them from the Romans and their king. But Jesus came to give his life for us, to restore our relationship with God. All month, we've seen those out in the Bible choose peace and now. Let's wrap up our peace series. With the one who gave it all. Quick, snack up and get ready, guys. Because it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we are in the third book of Luke, of the New Testament. In the beginning, God created everything, but when the people turned away from God, the world was broken. God loves us way too much to leave us on our own. So God chose one family, the Israelites, to promise to bless the whole world through them. Many, many years later, God fulfilled that promise by sending Jesus, God's very own son. Jesus traveled the land teaching and healing. He showed perfectly what it meant to love God and love others. But the religious leaders were upset. When Jesus entered Jerusalem for the Passover week, they made a plan to get rid of him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. This Sunday, we're celebrating Easter, which is pretty much the most amazing day in the history of history. But before we can get to Sunday, we have to rewind a few days to one of the darkest moments in history. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the crowds cheered him and gathered early each morning at the temple to hear him preach. But behind the scenes, one of Jesus' own friends, Judas, made a deal with the religious leaders to betray Jesus. On Thursday evening, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends. Jesus offered them wine and then broke bread and gave it to his friends as well. This represented how Jesus would give up his life for us. After the meal, Jesus and his friends went up to the Mount of Olives, where Jesus laid out his heart before God in prayer. Father, if you're willing to take this cup of suffering away from me, but do what you want, not what I want. As Jesus finished praying, a group of religious leaders and guards arrived, led by Judas. Now, Jesus could have easily called the angels to stop the men, but instead, he allowed himself to be arrested. Jesus' followers panicked and they ran away. Jesus was given a fake trial on Friday morning, and the religious leaders sent Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. I have found no basis for your charges against him. But the crowd cried out for Jesus to be killed. Eventually, Pilate handed Jesus over to be taken away. Jesus had done nothing wrong, but the soldiers nailed him to a rough wooden cross. At noon, darkness covered the land, and about three o'clock, Jesus cried out. Father, into your hands. And then Jesus died. The darkness was complete. But if Jesus was dead, how could he be the one God sent to rescue us? That evening, several of Jesus' followers took his body and laid it in a garden tomb. A cave cut into the rock and a giant stone was rolled to block the entrance. It seemed like the end. But remember, the promises God made long ago to bless the whole world to send a rescuer? God keeps every promise, which means this story was not finished. Through the dark of Friday night and Saturday through Saturday night, Jesus' friends hid out, afraid that they might be arrested next. Some of the women who followed Jesus wanted to place spices on his body, which was the tradition at that time. But they couldn't do any work on the Sabbath, which was Saturday, so they waited. And early on Sunday morning, the women gathered their supplies and hurried through the darkened streets to the garden and the tomb. Wait, what about the stone? Maybe we can roll it to the side if we all work together. I don't know, it's so huge. But when the women arrived at the tomb, they discovered something incredible. Look, the stone is gone. Should we go in? Of course we have to. What the women discovered was unbelievable. He's gone. As they stared in shock, two brilliant angels suddenly stood beside them. The woman fell down to their faces to the ground. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you on the third day he would rise from the dead? As the angel spoke, the women did recall what Jesus had told them. They were filled with joy and raced back with their friends, including where Peter was staying. He's alive, Jesus is alive. Don't joke about that. But 
The tome is empty. We saw angels, they told us. It's not possible. Peter had to see for himself. He ran into the tomb and saw the linen strips, but no angels. He left wondering what on earth had happened, and the situation got even more confusing later that day, when two of Jesus' followers reported that they had met Jesus along the road to Emmaus. We told you what Cleopas says, this proves it. Maybe someone stole his body to cause trouble. Are you saying we didn't tell you the truth? No, but... As they tried to figure out what was going on, Jesus himself appeared in the room with them. What? How? May you have peace. Jesus' friends were surprised and terrified. I mean, some thought Jesus was a ghost. Why are you troubled? Look at my hands and feet. It's really me. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have a body. Jesus showed the places in his hands and his feet. They were scarred by nails. His friends were still excited, but they still had a hard time believing. But how it... But how? This is too good to be true. Do you have anything to eat? They gave Jesus some cooked fish, and he ate it. Definitely not something a ghost could do. Then Jesus helped them to understand what was happening. This is what I told you. Everything written about me must come true. The Messiah will suffer. He will rise from the dead on the third day. People from every nation will hear it beginning in Jerusalem. You have seen these things with your own eyes. Jesus is alive, in fact. More than 500 people saw Jesus after he was raised to life. He proved that everything God says is true, and death is not the end. But for our story today, it's the end. Can you imagine what it had been like to have Jesus to show up in your room? I get why his friends were not sure he was real at first. Yeah, everything had gone so wrong. And suddenly, everything was completely right. It's the best plot twist ever. So what's our part in the story? Well, there is one thing to remember today, that Jesus is alive. When you choose to believe and follow Jesus, you make him the foundation of your life. You can trust him with everything. Every choice you have to make. Every hard, confusing thing that happens. Every relationship. Every question. Following Jesus won't make your life perfect but it does mean that Jesus will walk with you through every single moment and help you carry the hard things. It means that in the end, God will make everything right again. So here's the thing, Jesus is alive. He is the light of the world. The brightest light. And now let's finish this Bible story with prayer. So gather those hands, guys. Thank you, God, so much for your son, Jesus. Thank you that we can have a relationship with you that will last forever because Jesus died and was raised back to life. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Easter! Happy Easter!